Well, hello there everyone. UXW Bill here with you once again on YouTube. I'm actually in the midst of working on a couple different projects at the moment, and while I'm doing that, I actually have Chris Master 1's Rockin' Waves 11294 live stream through Vaughn Live on. Unfortunately, I've had to turn the volume down because obviously we don't want to have any run-ins with the Music Mafia. And as you can see here, I have a bit of a project. I'll be talking about that in just a moment. But for those of you who have been following along at home with my recent series of videos concerning this Samsung SyncMaster 203B LCD panel, well, I'm pleased to report that it has recovered to essentially perfect health. I've got all the brand new capacitors installed, also the replacement fuse. It is fully back together and it is working great. There's a little bit of a bright spot down here at the bottom of the display. There's also some gritty contamination over at the other end, and some hand salsa around the power button, but really, for the price of the capacitors being all that was required to fix it, and, well, one fuse too, I find it extraordinarily hard to complain. Well, guess what? I've got another victim, I mean project, sitting here on the uh, workbench tonight for another episode of Kitchen Table Electronics Repair. And I do apologize for the somewhat repetitive theme of my latest videos, but you know, to a certain extent, YouTube is what I do to pay my bills, and while I certainly enjoy making videos, there's also the matter of what material readily presents itself. And this thing was on the shelf right behind me. It's been actually waiting its turn for repair for a couple of months now. You see, my dad, he found this set out for the trash collection during his uh, course of work one day, and he stopped to pick it up. Now, the pickings have been kind of slim lately because the state of Illinois does not allow electronics to be disposed of in trash, although I really don't think that some legislation has made a great deal of difference here. If I had to guess, I would say people that don't recycle their electronics simply break them up into small enough pieces that they can be sneakily disposed of in with the regular waste stream. But another thing that has conspired to keep electronics set out for the curb from being there for very long is the proliferation of scrappers. And some of these people are just absolutely vicious when they find something. They'll actually rip it apart right there on the site and steal the things that they want out of it. Well, I guess you really can't call it stealing because, I mean, it was thrown out for the trash. But it's definitely a disappointment for those of us who like to comb the curbs on the night before trash pickup in order to collect things that are either perfectly functional or quite fixable, such as this monitor. And this monitor has yet another dose of bad Crapzon capacitors. You can see them there. These aren't domed up as badly as some are, and in fact this one over here might even still be good, but you give these things enough time and they're practically guaranteed to go bad. So. Got to replace them all. This monitor, unlike the other one, wouldn't even try to turn on. The switch mode power supply just whines a little bit. The panel itself is in pretty good shape, which is kind of a miracle because the people who collect the trash, they actually stuck a rude sticker on this thing saying, hey, you can't throw electronics in the trash. But really, apart from the fingerprints, I think it should clean up pretty nicely. And once I get this power supply board recapped, it should be restored to perfect function, perfect functionality. That's one thing that absolutely amazes me about these Samsung monitors. It certainly seems that Samsung is playing supplier bingo with these things. The previous monitor I worked on had a Samsung manufactured power supply. This one has a power supply from Fortron Source Group. <laughs> And it's a little bit differently built compared to all the others. In particular, I don't think there's a fuse on this board that could potentially kill the power to the backlighting, so we won't have to worry about that. You can see the basic design is kind of the same, but there are subtle differences, especially in how the high voltage for the uh, CCFL backlighting in these things is generated. Likewise, if I can get this up here without breaking all kinds of stuff, this monitor's panel has a different manufacturer as well. This panel actually comes from AU Optronics, and once again, I must admit, I'm very surprised that Samsung just does not manufacture their own panel. However, I do have to give whoever ultimately made this panel a little bit of credit, because instead of using annoying plastic snaps to put it together, it actually does have screws holding it together, at least on the bottom side of the cabinet, which made it a great deal easier to take apart. Well. Enough of my yakking. I think it's time to go ahead and see if a simple capacitor replacement is all that will be required to get this monitor to come back to life. And I will not be surprised in the slightest if that restores it to 
perfect health. So I've got my soldering and desoldering irons warming up over here. Let's see what happens. To my absolute amazement, I actually put most of the screws back into place in this thing, including the ones that hold the cabinet together. <laughs> I don't know where the ones for the stand are, but I suppose they'll turn up soon enough. But anyway, anyway I got the capacitors installed. Time to put the power supply board back in place and see if this thing goes bang in a loud and no doubt thrilling manner. How many of you out there have ever heard that saying, if everything seems to be going well, you've obviously overlooked something? Well, so far, everything seems to be going great. And in fact, I just found the stand mounting screws for this monitor. I cannot believe that I had the presence of mind when I took this thing apart to put all the screws back where they went. Because usually the way that I do things, which is certainly not the way to do anything, involves taking all the screws out of a device, thinking, oh, you know, I'm going to put this right back together, and then promptly losing them. But in this case, I did not do that. They are actually all right here, along with the previously mentioned screws that actually hold the back cover on. The only thing that I have not been able to find so far is the metal shield for this power supply area around the high voltage output. And I'm going to blithely assume that at least for the purposes of a test, that probably really doesn't have to be there. And if I can't find it, I may have to talk to a machinist or something about making a new one. I'm not real happy with the way these wires are routed, but uh, they seem to have, you know, a little bit of, of memory from the way that they were shaped when they were put in at the factory. And yeah, believe it or not, that's how they seem to go. I really don't like that. I hope they don't uh, get to arcing on one another, though I don't think the voltage is anywhere near high enough for that to be a concern. The other thing that I forgot and had to go back and fix, I forgot to plug in the LVDS connector from the, uh, the uh, processing board in this monitor. So what we're going to go ahead and do now is slip the back cover on this. How long did this thing live before it died? Let's see. March 2007. Wow, so it did not live all that long before the crappy capacitors let it down because it may have been sitting on my storage shelf for, oh, maybe a year. It's, just, it's sometimes how I get to these things, you know. <laughs> so let's go ahead and just for safety's sake, go ahead and pop the back cover on here. Put the screws in and see what it does. Smoke test! It's alive! <laughs> I don't have a very convincing evil laugh. All right, let's see if I can steal a VGA signal cable off of something, get this thing to work, <laughs> see what the overall picture quality is like. But if the self-test screen is anything to go by, looks like the backlighting on this thing might be pretty low mileage. But anyways, uh, we got a song request here. And uh, UXW Bill wants me to de- It's- it's a- it's a Casey Kasem dedication. Dear- dear Chris, recently I restored a Samsung SyncMaster 206BW. And I would like to dedicate this song to the Samsung Syn- Samsung- Samsung SyncMaster 206BW. Signed, UXW Bill. Well, UXW Bill, here's your long distance dedication. Sorry, that, that's a very bad Casey case. Um, Casey, forgive me. Welcome back. Your dreams were your ticket out. Welcome back. Now that's pretty much the whole story as concerns this Samsung SyncMaster 206BW flat panel monitor repair. There's really not much else to do. But some of you out there in the viewing audience may have noticed that there is a minor defect in the upper right corner of the image. Something between the backlight diffusing layer and the LCD panel itself is casting a shadow that is visible through all the layers of the screen. 
And while I don't know what's causing it, it really doesn't concern me a whole lot because it's not a very serious defect. Sometimes it's practically invisible, and I really don't want a chance disaster going inside the monitor to get it. You can, in theory at least, take these LCD panels apart to do things like replacing the backlights or to try and deal with press marks or something along those lines. But the problem with doing so is the very, very easy admission of dust to one of these panels. And living in a dusty old house as I do, it's not something I'm going to take a chance on. So unless that's something really obvious, like say one of the backlighting wire connections that's become visible somehow, I'm really not going to worry about it that much. Okay, so I've actually had this thing running now for about the past 15 minutes or so, and it's been humming along steadily, not that I expected anything less. But I thought it might be interesting to go ahead and see just how long the crappy Capzon capacitors in this thing managed to last. And credit goes to Yorgle 11 here on YouTube, Y-O-R-G-L-E and the number 11, 1-1, one, one, um, for cluing me in on a hidden service menu sort of thing that Samsung monitors have going on. And the way that you can do this yourself, though again, messing around in service menus can be an extraordinarily unwise thing to do. So do not do this unless you are willing to bear responsibility for all of the results, good or bad, and you understand that bad things can sometimes happen. Basically, you turn the brightness and the contrast to zero, and then you back out of that menu, so you're at the top level where you can see both options, and you hold down the source or Enter key, and with any luck, the monitor will go ahead and toggle into the service function. Now, there are some things you can change in here, but I'm not totally sure what they are. You can see that this monitor has been on for 21,774 hours. I don't know why there's two on time values there. Oh, yes, I do, because one of them's for the panel and one of them's for the monitor as a whole. Cycle, I believe, refers to how often someone has turned the monitor on and off, and that's a lot of on and off uh, options. I don't know what auto auto is for. I've tried changing it. It doesn't seem to change anything. Some of my monitors give a country indication of United States. Others say worldwide, and I really don't know what, if any, difference it makes. So there you have it. This monitor is definitely alive once again, and that means there's only one more thing to say. Thank you for watching, and feel free to leave a comment if you have one. And here's the official UXW Bill Driving Too Fast and Repairing Electronics song. Yeah. Rocking right away is 11294. All right. And, ladies and gentlemen, we, uh, we have a song. Rec Why am I holding this? This ain't a microphone. What am I thinking of here? And a man can cause he mixes it with other mix the world is pure. Yes, the candy man can cause he mixes it with other mix the world is pure.